believe it. You guys are never gonna believe this, dude. Uh, we got we uh, technical difficulties. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Just like the good old days of the early Wolf Den podcast, before yes. we figured out that you'd use a VPN. So uh, <laughs> we were the stream was crashing during the intro, uh, during this little starting soon thing. So uh, we we're off to the we we're off to a great start, everybody. Yeah. Uh, luckily, I think we finished it. Uh, I finished it. One I think we fixed it. I get my yeah. shut up, Italian woman. I muted you. You're muted. Um, so, some of you know I use a VPN because uh, my uh, something about my internet it just works better with a VPN. Um, turns out I don't know what I don't know what happened. The New York server just wasn't working, so I switched to a different VPN server, and uh, we should be good now. Yeah. Anyway, hello everybody. Welcome to the Wolf Dead Podcast. Will, how are you yes, today? Uh surprisingly sleepy i don't know if you noticed but this is iced coffee i'm drinking whoa you don't do that you usually have a tea not, yeah not especially not at eight o'clock at night mm. but uh we were watching sesame street with the little one and i started falling asleep so i have to fix that so i can be uh in tip-top shape to talk about all the all the news that happened this week i was also very sleepy today uh yeah. i had so much to do and i barely did any of it um yeah, I took a little. I took a little nappy poo at like five o'clock. Yeah. Uh, but I just had my latte. I'm feeling. I'm back in it. We're here. Uh, hello everybody. Marimba pirate. Thank you for the twenty three months. One month until I get my gold wolf. That's right. After a year, <laughs> you get a little gold wolf next to your name. Oh, well, there you go. That's that's something special. Well, I don't like this, but we're, let's talk about this real quick. Um, okay. I don't. I, I. A lot of streamers put the little sub count on on screen, like how many subs that they have on, right, on yeah. Twitch. I don't like doing that because two reasons. One, it's like telling people how much money you make. It's either not enough or it's too much. It's never the right amount, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, same thing with sub count. It's either you you have too many subs or you don't have enough subs it's never like right. that's fine that's enough. Yeah. that seems about right so that's why i yeah, don't like no talking about it also I don't, I don't like doing i don't like doing like milestone stuff i don't like making a big deal out of numbers it's just numbers i just i just like having a good time well with i mean i understand making a big deal about like the milestones that matter you know in terms of like you know at least on youtube you get a plaque but you know when right. people do milestones for like every five thousand subscribers <laughs> after that it's a little much <laughs> right um I, but you know i don't like putting labels on things i don't like that's why i don't like i i feel like yes a million you need to do something special for like a million subscribers but yeah. like like uh, i i don't think a million channel a million sub channel is worth more than like a hundred thousand sub channel it's more about is it the content that you put out you can get the same amount of right. views on both channels no, i get it yeah anyway um we have a sub counter on the screens in the bottom left corner right now. The reason why that's there is because yesterday, yesterday, Sunday, when I was streaming, uh, everybody, uh, people were going nuts, gifting subs and stuff, which I very much appreciate. The reason was because, um, I think it was Trevor Steinberg who asked, uh, how many gifted subs for a 24 hour stream? And I am vehemently, 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 you are very against. <laughs> I am very against 24-hour streams. I think everybody who does a 24-hour stream on Twitch is on cocaine. Uh, they're, <laughs> they're, most of them are on drugs. I, not, I don't know about Ludwig, because he was like sleeping and stuff. Yeah. He did a month-long stream. Um, but I think most, it, yeah, of the people, drugs. most of the people who do 24-hour uh, streams are on drugs. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm not. So I don't want to do that. I can, I can go for like three hours, and then I need a nap. Um, so I said 10,000 subs and I'll do a 24 hour stream. And now here we are with the sub goal on the, sh with the sub counter on the bottom left corner <laughs> going for that 10,000 baby. But really another sub goal I had, I don't have the tweet up. Uh, I said, if we hit a thousand subs, I'll wear a cat boy made outfit. Oh boy. <laughs> yep. So we'll do a cat boy made outfit. True. So here's the deal with that. A thousand subs, I'll wear the cat boy made outfit. But you have one day to get me to two thousand if you don't want me to wear the cat boy made outfit. 
<laughs> little little competition there for there you. There you go. What do you want more? To see him in the Catboy made outfit or to not see him in yeah, the Yeah, so, so if you want to see me in it, you have your opportunity. If you don't want to see me in it, then you have an opportunity to fight back. Yeah. There you go. I'm not shaving my legs, just to let everybody know. So, No, s- certain things are not worth losing. Anyway. Oh, and that sub count in the bottom left is a sub point. Uh, it doesn't really make a difference. It's the same thing. It's just in case somebody is like a tier two sub, it counts for two. Um. Anyway, thank you all for being here. We're here to talk about uh, we're here to talk about the Super Mario Party update because that came out. I'm back. Door. Yeah, what happened? With, that scared I, me. I thought I, I, I thought have, I was dropping. No, again. no. I have Discord open on two windows. I have it in like I have the app open and then I have it in the web browser to you know for when we read the questions and like an asshole I clicked on stream in the web browser uh, even though I have stream going in the app uh, and I you're... do that all the damn time <laughs> and I, I'm I'm sick of it and I, I wish it would stop you are that's an a asshole. Discord problem that's not my problem <laughs> I refuse to take responsibility for this um uh Anyway, we're here to talk about Mario Party because not because nothing happened this week at all. There's no, but uh, yeah. all of a sudden last last night this morning at three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> Nintendo hit us with a bombshell surprise. Yeah, Mario Party gets an update. Can I play this without playing music? Okay. Yeah. Um, all but ten of eighty mini games can be played with friends online. I now I understand why certain mini games can't be played online because. You need s- some sort of interaction with with the with the people around you. Yeah. Um, but they only gave you ten at first, I think, to play. Yeah, online. it was a it was a very small amount. Yeah, which is absurd. Like, yeah. figure out ways to let us play these things online. Yeah. All of a sudden, what? Two years later? Yeah, two years later, the Nintendo is letting us play uh, online Mario Party with friends. Yeah. I think this game is not great <laughs> and i don't think i, I think this helps marginally <laughs> i don't think you're necessarily alone in that sentiment mm-hmm. but i just feel like it's just so weird that they release this now <laughs> <laughs> it is it is weird it's, it's yeah <laughs> Who is this? This is a uh, as per Polygon, a new update to yeah. Super Mario Party. It's first in two years. <laughs> Finally, adds the main board game modes to its online options. The update went out Tuesday, so you and your friends can now enjoy all the rage of Mario Party together from anywhere in the world. Of course, to play online, players must have a subscription to the Nintendo Switch Online Premium Service, but the update lets them play both the classic Mario Party and Partner Party modes online in Super Mario Party. You know, the ones everybody wanted to do when the game first came out. (laughs) When playing online, players will have access to all 20 of Super Mario Party's characters as well as all of the game's maps, regardless of their progress, towards unlocking them in the regular game. Players can start matches in two different kinds of lobbies. The friends match, which is just for friends, or the private match, where anyone who has the password can join. Up to four players can join each game, and at least one of the groups can share a Switch as well. Oh. Though only one Switch in each match is allowed to bring a second player online. That's weird. Yeah. Um, so you can have so I can so I can have a I can play with my roommate versus you will uh, over there on Long Island. Yeah. Uh, and that would that would work. hmm Um that's pretty cool. It is weird that there's no uh, uh matchmaking, I guess, or 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 lobby system. Uh, I guess that would be, that's like an extra step to implement a feature like that. It's yeah, like, it's I like guess much it's also, easier to make a fr- like private matches. I guess also too, it must be because like this game is supposed to be played like you know the idea of Mario Party is you play it in a room with people you know, mm-hmm. and I guess they don't want you like to pair you up with like some random stranger in another country who you don't know. 
Uh, I mean, that's Nintendo, though. They're always like very much don't want you playing with people you don't already know. Yeah, that's true, too. And I, I, I feel like if there's uh, public lobbies, I guess, then you're going to have people who are just like insane at Mario Party. Yeah. And that doesn't sound like it would be a fun time at all. Yeah. I feel like public public Mario Maker would be just the absolute worst. Um, yeah. Anyway, before this update, Super Mario Party's online functions were limited to just 10 mini games. Players could join lobbies for specific events or use the online Mariothon mode. I didn't know that had a name to compete in a random selection of five. The update now means 70 of the game's 80 mini games are available to play online. While this is mostly aimed at making sure there are enough mini games to keep the classic mode interesting, it also means that players have more activities to choose from if they want to play online. For a look at the chat, uh, for a look at for a look, will at the changes coming <laughs> to Super Mario Party. Here's our Nintendo's full patch notes. They also they they also specify which of the 10 mini games can't be played let's go right to that uh because i want to know the following 10 mini games are not available when playing over the internet strike it rich time to shine take a stab all-star swingers rhythm and bruise pep rally wiped out fiddler on the roof clearing the table and baton and on i don't know why i thought i would recognize any of those I don't know anything about any of these mini yeah. games. I played Mario <laughs> Party for like two hours and said, I've had enough. <laughs> uh, um, play data won't be saved when playing over the internet. Well, that's obvious. Yeah. Playing over the internet mm -hmm. supports the invite friend feature. If you s select invite friend on the screen at which you're waiting for rivals, your selected friends can join from the online play invites on their use user page icon in the top left corner of the menu. Um, so that's that. You can play uh, Mario Party Online up to four people? Yeah, yes. two, two to four players. Up to two players per system. You can play with between three and four players. This is this is great. It's weird that it took this long. That doesn't make do much you, sense. Do you think this was something that should have that will not sh well should have, but when it was supposed to come out last year, like at the height of the pandemic? I think this, this definitely feels like this definitely feels like something that Nintendo is putting out because everybody was stuck at home. Yes. Um, I think it's absolutely ridiculous that they thought that they could put this game out without this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, this... Sh I think they put Mario Party out without this. Everybody was mad that they didn't have it, so they've been trying to implement it. Um, right. And they probably needed... Um, they They were probably you know putting resources in other areas whoever i don't know who exactly developed uh mario party mm -hmm. or super mario party they were probably working on something else uh that was more important i think Ma super mario party probably still sold a butt ton so oh yeah so um i think that updating it like this is still worth it for them because uh there's still people probably playing it a lot of casuals out there um, so I think it's good that they're still supporting a game two years on, but it is also probably one of the biggest Switch games. Yeah. I, it's, I, it's, it's just weird that they haven't really supported it at all until now. <laughs> yeah. It, I, I, you would think that this would be an easy thing to implement. Um, yeah. Also, uh, Nintendo has had very poor online functionality f since the Switch came out. Uh, yeah. We know that uh, Nintendo is working on a new uh, multiplayer, like online infrastructure situation, and the first game to use that was Monster Hunter Rise. Yeah, maybe Super Mario Party was taking so long to do this because they're using the same sort of functionality. Um, 
maybe that's why they held on to it for so long. They wanted to make sure it was the good internet and not the shit internet. Um, yeah. So that's possible. I have little faith, but it's also Mario. Part. Well, I guess the mini games you need to you need a good reaction time. You you need you need a good ping for that. It, it wouldn't fly uh, otherwise. Um, I that you never play this game, right? No, I haven't touched a Mario Party game since two. I mostly don't like Mario Party just because I think the game's bullshit. Like, yeah, you, you play the game right the whole way through, and then at the very end, they'll be like, "Oh, little Timmy did absolutely nothing. Here's the absolutely nothing. Star. Here's all the points. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Here's here's a star for getting the least amount of coins. So, I I think it's I I think it's trash. Um, but. Uh, I'm happy for everybody else who's, who's able to now play Mario Party with their friends two years on. Um, I didn't realize it's out now, this update. Yeah, it came out today. Uh, that we, that they, that should, I mean, I, I, I wish I knew I would have set up a stream for it. I, <laughs> I, I got a, I would have set up week. a stream. I, I hate my life. <laughs> <laughs> After talking about how much I don't want to play the game. Yeah. Uh, also of note, in Ma one of the first things that I realized in Mario, in Super Mario Party, is that the dice doesn't work right. Like, you can't. Oh yeah. The way it rolls, you can't. Um, you can't like gauge. Like, like you can't time it. It's completely random. It looks like you can time it, but you can't. Yeah. I saw some YouTube video that says you can't time it at all because it is completely random, but. When I first played it, it seemed like to me, whatever you hit on the very bottom is the one that shows up on the front. Yeah. There there used to be, I think in the older games, you could time it. Yeah, but, because you know, it's a of freaking course, dice that's rolling and you're supposed yeah. to stop it. So, like, why wouldn't you think that you could time it? Yeah. It's the whole point. Nope. Like you said, they got to make sure little Timmy gets mm -hmm. all the points. Anthony Edwards says dice are supposed to be random. Then don't show me it or spin it so fast I can't see it. Don't don't yeah. make it. It looks it, the way it's presented to me looks like the the Mario Three mini game where you're supposed to match the heads. That's, oh yeah, that's the way it's presented to me. And that you can time. That you can time. Uh, uh anyway um yeah i mean i'm i'm happy they're finally supporting old games i w i mean yeah uh you know in the past nintendo's been pretty bad about supporting old games but for the switch they've been doing a pretty decent job at least in, in terms of nintendo uh they've supported mario party for a decent amount of time uh it is dying i think today i think today's the death of of uh <laughs> mario did i say mario party or mario maker i you meant say Ma mario party i meant mario maker Mario right. Maker is dying today because uh, I think yeah. today's the end of the last Ninji speedrun. Mm -hmm. um, but they've been doing a decent amount of uh, support on it. Um, also, there's a new Japanese commercial for Mario Party. So, this uh, I did not see. Uh, this is this was on Nintendo Everything. Uh, I'm sure it, there's nothing you know crazy in it, but uh, yeah. this just tells me that they're uh, this is all premeditated and they're 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 having a new push for Mario Party. Yeah. Um, other people are saying this means that they're making a Mario Party 2. A uh, Super Mario Party 2. I don't I don't know about that. I just... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, f I feel like Mario Party is the type of game where Nintendo could theoretically just, you know, do another soft launch of it every year or right. every like two, three years uh, in this case to remind people that it is out so that they can go out and get it. You know, it's basically like Mario Kart. Yeah. We're not we're not going to see Mario Kart Nine for any time soon, but they keep selling Mario Kart Eights, so they want to release an update for that. Yeah, it has enough you know, brand recognition sense. where it's always going to be in on the top of the charts, so they don't really yeah. have to uh, do anything too crazy. But being but supporting it, supporting the user base that's already there is is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Um. It's just a shame this wasn't there when it started. Because if this was yeah. there when the game launched, you might be seeing more people streaming on Twitch and stuff, and there might be like a community around it. Um, but I feel like people don't realize that the game has because 
everybody's going to be reading old reviews that say that the game doesn't have online. Yeah. This uh, Japanese uh, commercial has nothing about the online functionality. It's just <laughs> people. It's just a family yeah, playing all in the game. Same room. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's that's weird. Yeah, um, but that just shows they're doing a new push for Mario Party. Mm-hmm. Good for them. Um, maybe I'll do a stream on it. I don't know when the hell I would do that though. That would be a fun time. See me get really yeah. mad. <laughs> All right, we got a lot of notifications just now. Yes, I fixed my Streamlabs problem where I now I can see everything. Turns out Chrome was the problem. Oh, what are you in? I'm using now? Firefox. Oh, yeah. like like the Phoenix rising from the yes. ashes. Well, <laughs> uh, we got FF Net O C W B. Thank you for the three months. We got Daniel Ox with two months. I need to see you. You see me. There he is. This is because they want to see me in a cat made outfit. <laughs> Har Car, thank you for the three months. Spoopy Girl, thank you for the two months. And Circa RVN, thank you for the Prime subscription. Thank you. Uh, after this stream, uh, I think I'm going to stay on for a little bit longer, and I'm going to unbox this thing. This is a... Uh, it's a it's a keyboard that works oh. on the switch, but it has it's it. I don't. I, I think this is for like you know the game Ozu. Yes, that like rhythm game, but you use yeah, like yeah. a mouse. I think this is like for those types of games. Interesting. Uh, I don't want to do another keyboard controller video, but uh, there's yeah. nothing going on, so <laughs> that's what people are getting. Uh, maybe I'll play Ozu. <laughs> There you go. <laughs> um, anyway. Next new... Oh, wait. Bob, play Tori 3D. It's an N64 style platformer on the Switch. It's great. I kind of want to see this. All right. Right off the bat, not liking the art. <laughs> uh, a 25-minute preview on Nintendo Life? Do we need that? How about, this? How about just a trailer? Oh, I've seen. I mean, it. oh, this was in the tra this was in the indie world, I think. Was it? I remember seeing this. This this looks pretty good. I mean, it does. It definitely looks like an N sixty four platformer. It kind of looks like Sonic. It's got that vibe, definitely. Not, not like visually, but like mechanically, it looks like it looks yeah, like yeah, a Sonic situation. Yeah, you're running fast, jumping. That's what all Sonic over does. The place. Yeah. <laughs> so how can this game get it right but sonic keeps failing <laughs> that does look really good um maybe i will play that i uh, saw someone tweet that sonic forces is better than the first sonic game and i said something about it but then i deleted the tweet when i realized that that person was a literal child <laughs> that person uh that was the first game they ever played probably <laughs> uh all right, now we need to talk about this. Pokemon Snap yeah. comes out on Friday. And what was it? Uh, last Where does the time go? Where does the time go? Last Thursday, uh, I saw I, I was I was on the train to Boston and I, I was getting off of the train and I looked at my phone and it I saw Twitter was going nuts. Because uh, freaking Fujifilm is releasing a Nintendo-themed InstaX printer. So you remember those? Well, remember remember Pokemon Snap on the N64? Of course I remember Pokemon Snap on the N64. Do you remember going to a little blockbuster? First of all, renting the game because uh, we didn't own the game? <laughs> nope. I, I remember, of course, going to the blockbuster video uh, just down the road, renting the game for six ninety nine for a week, and then bringing it back to the blockbuster. But before we dropped it in the little slot, we brought we carted it over to the big kiosk where you could put the cartridge in, and then print out a sticker sheet of all the Pokemon we took pictures of. Mm -hmm. They gave you a credit card with all your data on it, so you put the credit card in there <laughs> to save your data. It was great. This is uh, what the stickers looked like. They were little tiny. Yeah. They were very tiny. Less than an inch. 
Yeah. No, they were like smaller than stamps. They were half an inch, maybe. Yeah. Uh, they were very tiny. You got a card that had uh, what was it, 16 on here. Uh, yeah. Oh, it does four, 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 and four. Um, of so you only get four pictures, but you get four stickers for each picture. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you go to this giant kiosk, and that's how you would print out your pictures. That was what 25 years ago. Something like that. Yeah. Uh, well, we got the new Pokemon Snap coming out this week, mm -hmm. and Fuji and you need a way to print pictures you need a way to print the pictures i was thinking about that i was like well it's it's 2021 we could probably just tweet them take a screenshot put them on your computer or something like that no yeah. fujifilm has partnered with nintendo uh they have this instax instax printer it's a little tiny yeah. printer that uh works with your phone it's it's made to print cell phone pictures I think it's a weird concept because what are you going to be in the woods? Like, when do you need to? Well, print no, this pictures? is um because I know other companies. Like, I know Canon has a similar product to this. Um, it's it's very popular with the the, the teens and the tweens. Yeah, so they can just like print out pictures from their phone and like put it on their locker or their notebook or their trapper keeper or whatever teens and tweens put pictures on. So, so I um, used to have one. What was it? A Polaroid. Yeah, it, but but it was it was like a Polaroid that printed one inch by like one inch pictures. Yeah, and it, you could take them off and stick them on things. Uh, I get that. Um, okay, you convinced me. It's this is a tween <laughs> thing. It makes sense now. Yep, I got my finger on the pulse of the tween market. <laughs> so Billy Eilish has a new album coming out. Get ready, <laughs> folks. So this is actually on Fujifilm's YouTube. Um, Fujifilm Japan, obviously. Yeah. Um, so it was announced that you can you can use this printer that already exists with the Nintendo Switch. I'll read Polygon's article. Fujifilm and Nintendo have announced a new collaboration. The camera company is releasing a new Switch themed version of its Instax Mini Link Photo Printer, as well as a new app that's designed to let you edit Switch screenshots and print them on out onto Fujifilm's polaroid style instax <laughs> film or add nintendo characters to your photos y you that must suck to be a camera company putting out a product and they go oh it's it's it's, it's polaroid like your, style yeah. <laughs> it's very similar to what your competitors do yeah you can transfer screenshots from your switch to the new instax mini link for nintendo switch app that's the, that's the name of the app. Instax Mini Link for Nintendo Switch. You can transfer them with a QR code. Boo. The so, app... All right. Go ahead. Keep going. No, no. no, you go, no you, keep reading. The, the app contains filters and 59 new frames for games like Super Mario, Animal Crossing, and appropriately enough, the upcoming new Pokemon Snap. Here are... Here's how some of the frames look. That's uh, cute. It's so cute. I don't need any of this in my life. I'm never going to use these frames. Well, yeah, because you're not a teen or a tween. That's a good point. <laughs> you're a 25 year old modder. I am double. I am double a tween. <laughs> I'm a tween times two. Uh, the actual printer hardware itself is identical to the existing Instax Mini Link, but it comes in Switch-inspired red and blue trim, and there's a bundle with a frankly adorable Pikachu silicone case. I started laughing in the middle of the sentence because <laughs> I, re I rem remembered. Uh, so I, when I heard this news drop on Thursday, I mm -hmm. instantly bought one of these uh, Instax printers. Because I, I got to immediately make a video on right. it. Because this is yeah. Nintendo hardware. This is great. This is my field. You know, I got to do Did you this. buy the Nintendo specific one or did you just get a regular? So let me tell you about that. So okay. I had no idea that there was a Pikachu branded bundle or mm -hmm. a Nintendo themed one until today when Benny, who edits for the YouTube for the Wolf Den Clips channel, when mm -hmm. he told me 
<laughs> well, he said, where did you get the Instax printer? And I said, oh, I got it from B&H here. It's like yeah. sold out everywhere. Actually, I think Adorama has some. I learned that today. I think Adorama has some still. Um, but um, he was like, oh, you didn't get the Pikachu one? I was like, what are you? What the fuck are you talking about, dude? <laughs> and then he told me. And I laughed because he's a tween. <laughs> <laughs> So that is, that is, it makes, it all comes full circle. It makes perfect sense why yeah. you would know that, uh, more about this than I would. Yep. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, there's a, so the Pikachu one is just a case. Yeah. But the, uh, the Instax printer itself has like a blue and red, like, uh, like highlight. It's like very yeah. subtle, like blue and According red. According to the like, official website, uh, the Instax Mini Link app for Nintendo Switch can be used with all Instax Mini Link products. Okay. So no matter which version you get, it'll work. But, you know, obviously you want the Nintendo Switch version. Yeah, so so the P yeah. so there's two bundles apparently. There's one that is just the printer that has the little blue trim around the logo and like a red trim on like where the picture comes out. It's very yeah. very subtle. The mo it's mostly yeah. white. That yeah. bundle, there's that bundle. Well, it's not a bundle. It's just the printer. It's the Nintendo printer. Then there's yeah. a bundle that comes with a Pikachu case, and that's the one that everybody's gonna want. Yeah. Uh, Fujifilm says the app and the printer will be released on April 30th, uh, which is Friday when mm -hmm. the fucking game comes out. The special edition mini link will cost $100, while the Pikachu case bundle will sell for $120 later in May. So the Pikachu one's not coming out till way later. Yeah. Uh, the app will be free to download and will still work with existing Insta Instax Mini Link printers. So I'm going to try to have a video out on Tuesday. I'm going to give myself some time to make it. Uh, and uh, it's going to be with a regular old printer. Sorry, it's not going to have the little blue trim. Um, what color did you get? Uh, the white, the dark denim. I, the, I, I made sure to the, get the white. <laughs> So okay. on screen, you can kind of see the blue trim around the logo and like the white is like up yeah. here. I mean, not the white, the red is like up here. It is barely noticeable. Easily photoshoppable, which is what I will yeah. probably have to do for the thumbnail. Um, so yeah, this is, I think this is pretty cool. This is, this, this is cool for me being a 31 year old man <laughs> who, who wants to play Pokemon Snap the way that I did. 25 or so years ago or whenever the hell it so, came out i i think this is cool i think this is a good idea i have two complaints <laughs> one i don't think it's fair that something that was such a big appeal of the original pokemon snap is limited to just one brand of printers oh I think that there should have been a way to open up uh, this game to other kinds of printers, you know, because maybe you don't have the Instax mini printer. Maybe you have like the 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 Canon version. Where I think it's like the the Elf printer or whatever. Um, maybe you have an Epson regular printer or a Brother regular printer that you want to use. I don't think you know. I don't think it's very cool of Nintendo. Uh, to partner with one particular printer company to in order to get your pictures printed uh, in this special format. I, I get that, like, not everybody had a Blockbuster back <laughs> in the day. Like, that was easily, you know, accessible from their house or whatnot. But I feel like in 2021... There are, with things like, you know, any iPhone can print from any printer, any Android phone can print from any printer. This this should have been something that was much more open than it currently is. Do, do you think That's this is... issue one. Is this the most popular portable printer? Is that why they decided I, to go with this one? I honestly don't know. Like, like I'm, I'm very confused by the partnership of Nintendo and Fujifilm. That seems... Right. Weird. There are... I mean, every camera, every well, major camera company is Japanese. 
every single one of them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I mean, I understand why they don't want to partner with Sony. <laughs> that right. makes sense. But uh, wh what made them land on Fujifilm? Is this the most popular portable printer in Japan? I don't know. I'm, I'm, well, uh, I'm the only thing I can think, the only thing I can think of now, Bob, I don't know if you know this, mm -hmm. but it, the U S version of super Mario brothers two is based on a game called Doki Doki panic. Why are we bringing this up? <laughs> because Doki Doki panic is a licensed game. <laughs> oh, it's a licensed game based on right. characters from Fuji television, which I'm pretty sure is like, a subsidiary of the the major Fujifilm Corporation. You are correct, Will. I, you know, so I, there might be some longstanding partnership there. This this has been this this partnership has been around for <laughs> decades, Will. Yes, I did. I didn't know that. That I mean, I knew that, but I didn't. I I I didn't think about that. <laughs> No, I know. I know you've tried to block this out of your head as much as humanly possible. It's so hard to even find any information on on it. I think I think the only time these characters were like ever used was in a at a conference of some sort. Yeah. Very very strange. I'm trying to find that is even that is even if. This I don't even know if this is act if they're actually real if the two companies Fuji Television and Fuji Film are related. True. Uh, according to Wikipedia, they are not. So there goes that theory. Oh, garbage. Well, you you what do you know, Will? <laughs> At least I'm trying here. Damn it. I guess I guess Fuji is a pretty popular term in, in Japan. That would make a Probably. lot. Of, that would make a lot of sense. That's like calling something, you know, New York TV or New York photo. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, anyway. Um, uh, um, well, my second issue. Well, you know, film and TV, they, they should, they're like, you know, they're tangential. Yeah. What's your second issue? My second issue is, so this sort of solves the first issue in that there already is a way to take your screenshots off of the switch and put them on your phone and then transfer from your phone to any printer you want. Mm -hmm. The problem is that's a, that's a fairly complex way to do things. Yes. It's not just like on Xbox live or PSN where you take a snapshot and it's saved to a, to like a cloud drive somewhere where that you can access on the mobile app. You have to like scan a QR code, go to like a special web page and then like save the picture, like hold, press and hold to save the picture to your photo album. It's not intuitive. It's it's clunky. It's adding extra steps to something that doesn't need all these extra steps. And from the sound of it, this app sounds like it's doing the exact same thing. <laughs> yes, Th this. That's why I said boo to the QR code. This isn't gonna yeah. be. This isn't gonna be user friendly at, at all. I don't. I don't think. No. I mean, I think it'll be. I, I think it'll be easy to figure out. I think it's going to have too many steps. Yeah. If they wanted to make, if they wanted to partner with this printer specifically, then I think they should have just built that code into Pokemon Snap, and it, like have it say "Print to your Fuji Instax printer," he, and he, like that. That's it. But like they didn't. You still got to jump jump through hoops. What? what? What they should do is is just I mean, it's it's just a share button. The share button takes a picture and that file is on your memory card. Yeah. And in 2021, what I want to do with my Pokemon Snap pictures is put them on Twitter. Or if I want to print them, they're going on my computer and I'm going to print them on a printer. So yeah. uh, which I don't have. I don't own a printer. Um and I'm and if I wanted a printer, I don't I don't think the Fuji film in stacks <laughs> is gonna be at the top of my list for print. Although I don't have a lot of room, so maybe. I feel like now maybe if I have to print documents, I'm gonna print little four by six documents. Yeah. <laughs> um so I 
I feel like Nintendo just needs to have a way to get the pictures to the computer or to social media way easier than it works right now. Or, yeah. uh, or to the phone. Fo- I mean, they have the Switch online app. Yeah, but that's literally just for voice chat. You can't do anything else in it. You can't, like, buy games from it. You can't save games to a wish list. You can't, like, find, see what your friend your friends are doing. It's literally just for voice chat. Xbox does it the best. You you take a screenshot yeah. or, or a video, and it immediately goes to your phone. The only yeah. thing that I don't like about it is that you can't be playing an online game, or else you have to quit out of the game and for it to go to your phone. Mm-hmm. Um, that is annoying because I only do it for Warzone, and that's an always online yeah. game. Um, but I always want to share either like a, like a like a cool kill or something, and I I hold the button, it takes the recording, it immediately goes to my phone, and then I pick up my phone, yeah, I trim it on my phone, and I text it to my friends or i send it out on twitter or whatever it's the greatest and that's all i could see people doing with pokemon snap um the novelty of having a picture print out is pretty cool i remember that was great back in the day um but we also didn't have social media so uh putting it putting the picture on my locker or on my uh my trapper keeper (laughs) was kind of the same as putting it on my uh my feed if you will Mm mm-hmm um there could be a better way to connect this printer to the switch or yeah or or again just put it on the phone just bring if the phone has to be the middleman fine but the way i have to take a picture of a fucking qr code makes me want to just jump out the window yeah um and they did they did make uh sharing screenshots a little bit easier on on the on uh, the switch, but they didn't, it really didn't help that much. There was yeah, an update I mean, like a year ago or something that yeah. made it like a little easier, but yeah. uh, it, it really, it wasn't that great still. And it, and it's like, if you wanted to share the picture on your switch, to Twitter directly, you can do that, but they have, they never updated it to the current character limit. <laughs> it's still it's still limited to 140 characters. That is so dumb. That is yeah. so easy to fix. I know. That it that's just like a line of code in 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 the uh in in the operating system that they update every other month. Yeah. That's so dumb. That I don't understand. The chat is going nuts about how I don't have a printer. What what do I print? I the last thing I printed were the tenant uh uh stickers and i went to our parents house for that yeah um that's not true i think i print but i you know what i do i i tell i go sam can you print something while you're at work and then he prints me a document yeah i don't know what the last thing i needed to print was it's 2021 i don't don't print anything the the i'm surprised the amount of things i've had to print like this last year (laughs) The last company that I worked for didn't have a printer there. They this, everything was paperless. Uh, yeah. So I mean, yeah, I understand the novelty, and I think this is a cool thing. I just, uh, I'm, I'm, I have little faith that it's going to be uh, user friendly. I think there's going to be a lot of weird, needless, like, like garbage that you have to go through to just to get the yeah, picture printed. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That, all that being said, hopefully when you do send this to your phone and then to the printer, hopefully there'll be a way to save the picture to your phone. So yeah. you could also just have it on your phone. That would be nice. Um. Oh, I have the Japanese announcement. Why did I put the Japanese announcement here? What is this? What is this? So on the, if you click on the Japanese announcement on the... So yeah. you have you have Pokemon Snap. You have Animal Crossing and you have Mario, and they both say they all say hi next to it, which I think is pretty funny. But the Mario picture, they're all from they're all screenshots of the game. But the Mario picture is like a Mario sixty four promotional art, right? That's not yeah. a normal render. Yeah, that's a we that's an old weird render. That is old. Yeah, <laughs> that's bizarre. So this must. I mean, this is Nintendo. This is nintendo's website but yeah this, this is must nintendo.co.jp 
this must have been this picture must be from from Fujifilm. Yeah. Very strange. I hope I got the right paper. I'm going to be very mm. mad if I got the if I got the wrong paper. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I think in stacks it should just be the same type of paper across all devices. Mm -hmm. I hope so. The paper's yeah. expensive. For, yeah. For for a 10 pack, it's like $10. It's like a dollar a picture. Jeez. Yeah. And maybe it'll go down, but um, yeah. Oh wait, they show you the process right here. Oh, there you go. Uh so you so you go to your you go to your album. Mhm. Mm you go to the screenshot, you go to send to smartphone, and then you get the QR code, Will. And then you take the QR, and then you open the Instax app on your phone. Yeah. You take a picture of the QR code after you pick your theme or whatever. And then it, and then you, and then it prints it. Yeah. Uh, I think we're just mad about the QR code. I think the QR code is the, is the is our biggest problem with all of this. Well, yeah, because it's it's stupid and unnecessary. <laughs> they have Bluetooth on the Switch. Yes. Did we ever figure out like there was a few Why weeks ago the Bluetooth that they, they found... sucks so much? I know. No. <laughs> no, there were a few weeks ago they found out that like somewhere in the Switch code that like has support for Bluetooth audio, but it's not enabled. Yes. Did they ever figure like did anything happen with that? Did like hackers figure out what's going on or no. whatever? No, they did not. <sighs> Life is a toilet. Life is a toilet, Will. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, all in all, the way that they presented it, it seemed pretty easy. Uh, yeah. But we'll we'll see when I actually get my hands on it this weekend and try it out. Yeah. We'll see how easy uh, it is. Razzle Jazzled said the last blockbuster needs to partner with Nintendo of America to do some sort of promotion for new Pokemon Snap. And I agree. <laughs> I'm surprised they don't have the Pokemon Snap kiosk there because they got all this other random crap there, you know, in like their museum section or whatnot. They should totally have that. Uh, I think the chat is arguing whether or not that render is a. Uh... Mario 64. Uh, I don't know where exactly it's from, but the actual Mario looks exactly like a Mario 64 render. Yeah. Like the promotional art. I don't know where yeah. exactly that specific picture came from, but it looks like mm -hmm. the Mushroom Kingdom outside of Peach's house. And uh, yeah. And uh, the actual render looks like this. So Yeah. It's like the same, like, it's hard to describe, but like the coloring and like the, the texture of it looks like promotional art yeah yeah the lack of 64. texture <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah it looks just like that yeah very strange i don't know um anyway there's one more little piece of uh piece of pokemon snap news mm -hmm. um i just thought this would be interesting to uh, i was interested in this before a new pokemon snap there had already been a couple of attempts at rebooting the series According to oh. Nintendo Life. For those of us old enough to remember it, the nostalgia surrounding Pokemon Snap on the Nintendo 64 will be one of the most compelling factors for playing the upcoming sequel, New Pokemon Snap. It's been more than 20 years since the first game was released, so players who grew up playing the N64 Classic have been waiting for a very, very long time. As Nintendo consoles have come and gone, we've often felt that a sequel would be a great idea. Take the 3DS and its combination of AR tech and an actual camera, or the Wii U and its camera-like gamepad that would be used in conjunction with the TV. Both would surely have made for a fantastic Pokemon photography experience, yet no games ever hit the market. As it turns out, though, it's been revealed that there have been attempts at a... Uh, at a series reboot in the past in a conversation with the metro game director game director haruki suzaki has explained that he's heard about previous ex experiments with the franchise noting that switch is quote the perfect time to make a new game uh suzuki says suzaki says when i started on this project i had heard that there had been a couple of attempts at making a new pokemon snap before 
The idea of photography has changed so much in the last 20 years combined with the new Nintendo Switch hardware that we thought it was the perfect time to create a new version of Pokemon Snap, and that's why we started the project. That wasn't interesting. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was going to be way more interesting. I thought we were going to hear I, about Yeah, like, like they were, they were talking about, like, maybe they did some prototypes yeah. of it, you know, some, some um, pre-production rendering or doodles of what it could look like. Basically, he just said, yeah, we thought about it. Didn't want to do it. <laughs> what a what a what a weird. Okay. Yeah. All right. I mean, probably should have read the article before I. <laughs> I was like, this will be fun to read together. This, I'm interested yeah. in. It. Maybe it'll be cool. Um. I, I I'm still on the fence about Pokemon Snap. I mean, I have to play it. I'll play it on Thursday. Um. I'm still on the fence about how I I I, st- I mean I don't I don't I never thought that the original was like that great, um, and this new one looks to be exactly the same as the twenty yeah. year old game. <laughs> um. Also, people were going nuts on Twitter about this like uh video of uh, a a shark looking Pokemon chasing after a Squirtle, and then he goes under a Lapras and comes up behind him and lands on the Lapras. Did you see that? No, I didn't see that. Everyone was like, wow, these interactions are going to be so crazy. Squirtle just like floats onto the Lapras like they forgot to animate him. I don't yeah. understand why everybody <laughs> thinks that, that was like so cool. Anyway, uh, that's that. Uh, look forward to Pokemon Snap on Friday. I will attempt to play it on Thursday if I get it, uh, if I'm able to get it early. We have a lot of notifications again. Um, right. We left off with Travel Steinberg, who gifted a butt ton of subs, just like he did yesterday. Thank you very much, Travel. You missed it before, I think. Uh, there's a sub count in the bottom left corner because of you. Uh, and Edrew resubscribed for seven months. Iron Angelo was gifted a sub. Oh, no, has gifted subs to Slopest. Thank you, everybody for your generosity if you're a new sub make sure you join our discord discord judge dot gg slash wolf den and you get into the supporter only discord channel and you get videos early most of the time um uh all the interactions are fully scripted though aren't they they don't have any individual ai or anything so really all it is is a movie yes Yes and no. Well, because in the original, you can like manipulate them. Like you can throw stuff at them. You can throw food at them to get them to eat the food. You could throw pester balls at them to get them like annoyed and do something. You, uh, um, there's can, interactivity with the world. You can trigger the animations. Right. And you can trigger different animations for different things. Yeah. Like it, the game is right. missed. It's missed. It's a point and click <laughs> game. Basically, yes. Dark Lord says, "I'm ex- I'm more excited for the free roam Pokemon. Oh, the free roam Pokemon game. Yes, I was. I thought yeah, you were saying Legends. That. I thought you were saying this yeah. game was free roam. This game should be free roam. It's should ridiculous be. that it's freaking. That they're literally just. They, they. It feels to me like they didn't expect. They. They didn't take modern game design <laughs> into account. <clears throat> I don't know. It. 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 I. I will reserve my judgment." For when yeah. the game actually comes out, and I'll I'll give it a shot. Um, but yeah, I am also excited for Pokemon Arctis Ar- Arceus. That game looked dope. Yeah. Uh, next news. Okay. New way to play Tetris. What? Yes. Uh, apparently, people are finding found a new way to play Tetris on NES, and it's actually leading to several world record. Uh, attempts like people are breaking records with this new play style this is a it's cool. this, this is a dirty looking play style well <laughs> a new way to play t- nes tetris has been recently hey, discovered and it's leading to new world records but freaking it's muted dude it says it's muted <laughs> you know italian women if they got they want to say <laughs> they, something they, you can't say mute it. them 
<laughs> They're just gonna say it. Uh, a All new right, a new strat involves rolling your fingers on the controller while applying pressure to the D-pad. It sounds a bit strange, but it's already got the attention of players looking to improve their game. A video posted by YouTuber A Game Scout last week goes over rolling, a new way to play NES Tetris. Before rolling, there were two ways pros played Tetris on NES to achieve uh, records or win competitions. Das is just the standard way to play Tetris using the D-pad to move the pieces left and right. But another way to play is called hyper-tapping. This involves hitting the D-pad with a lot of quick presses, resulting in faster movement. While this method is effective, it took the community a long time to fully embrace it. It wasn't until 2018, after a young player won a prestigious competition using hyper-tapping, that players are started using it. Now, in 2021, it's become more... It's become the most popular movement technique amongst top pros, but hyper-tapping is hard to master and quickly strains your muscles and fingers or even causes minor hand injury. How badass are you if you get a hand injury playing Tetris <laughs> on NES? Enter Tetris player Cheesefish, who in late right. 2020 began experimenting with a new style of hitting the D-pad inspired by some other quick tapping techniques created by speedrunners and high score players. Cheesefish began trying to figure out a way to roll their fingers across the D-pad in a smooth, continuous motion. This could, in theory, be faster and easier on the hands. Eventually, in November, Cheese Cheesefish figured out that they could roll their fingers back on the back of the controller while pressing the D-pad buttons in in the desired direction using slight amounts of pressure. Done properly, this allowed Cheesefish to move the pieces <laughs> in any Tetris faster than anyone had done using hyper-tapping. And now, in 2021, these have set records and won tournaments using, technique, using this technique. And here you can see um, this technique being used on somebody's foot <laughs> in one of the pictures. Uh, I understand. I, I can see how this could but what i mean i've never gotten to the part in tetris where it gets insanely fast yeah so i want to see that i want to see oh there it is whoa how, how i don't understand how they have so much control over the inputs while they're rolling their fingers on the back of the controller. Yeah. It's such a... Because, you know, you're so used to holding the controller one way, this way. Right. D-pad in your left hand, A and B buttons in your right. And now you're asking players to use the right hand on the D-pad and the other hand on the back to, like, guide the controller to the right buttons and whatnot. And another player, Tenga Mech, found a way to do it with his foot. So he's got okay, like no. the controller. If you scroll down a little bit, you'll see the picture. It's he's got to? the controller on his it's he's wearing a sock. <laughs> <laughs> he's got the yeah, he's got the controller on his foot and he's like rocking it on his foot. Why? I, that uh, now this makes it even more confusing. Why the why do you need to rest it on your heel? I guess that helps the rocking motion. <laughs> Sorry, the rolling motion. That's freaking. Uh, it sounds like a table would be better. Get a table in front of you. I don't. I don't know because like, I guess you would need something that like curves, so you can like rock uh, roll it. You know what would be better? What would be, what would be so much better than all of this stuff? Well, what? Actually, no. A keyboard. <laughs> you can use your fingers on the keyboard. Like that. They're rolling the back of the controller. Just roll the keyboard keys. I don't, I don't know. What do you mean, I don't know? Because... You, you get keyboard keys. You get the switches on, that are, like, so insanely light that you just, like... They're, like, air triggers. Right. But I guess... something like this, you can have some of them be the really light ones. And because some be it the really sounds like ones. what they're doing is like they have the D-pad like this. And then with the hand that's on the back of the controller, that right. is what does the actual You're right. button presses. They're I think rocking with a keyboard, it back. Yeah. I mean, a keyboard, yeah, you can use your all your fingers to like do exactly what you needed to do. But right. I think it's it's 
there's there's yeah. a visualization on this video that has the rocking motion where you're using the way it rocks back you're pressing it on the on the press and the rock back so on the yeah. in and the out it's they're both being pressed so you get double the speed yeah um god doesn't the nes have like uh like a like a like a max like like input level like how how fast could it possibly go i don't know <laughs> I, I i when i see these people pl playing at, at this d d doesn't the game also uh uh isn't there a kill screen like it doesn't uh, go well, forever right it th there is a, a finish line depending on uh, I well, cause remember there's two different Tetrises. There's Tengen Tetris, which was unlicensed, and then there's Nintendo Tetris, which was licensed. And and one of the modes you you can actually beat, and at the end, it's got all the Nintendo characters like playing instruments, like in Celebration. Mm -hmm. Okay, I, I remember so. seeing tournaments and stuff that there's like some sort of kill stream kill screen where the game like um, yeah. freaks out. Um. Anyway, uh, that's pretty cool that they found out that that yeah. that after all these years they found a new technique that <laughs> although now all of a sudden, uh, I don't know, is this gonna break new records or is or what? People they they said that's already like leading to new records and oh, you know. Uh, well, congratulations, cheese fish. <laughs> <laughs> um thank you mecha dragon for the 100 bits hey bob do you still sell clothing on your wolf den apparel brand i saw some old, uh we there is everything is sold out right now i saw some old videos of yours and it reminded me when you used to promote them everything sold out i have we were we we're working on new stuff uh, i'm i've been very lazy about it it's all my fault blame me um but soon I've been saying soon for the past year, but soon. <laughs> Picky gamers uh, with eight months. Keep it up, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Um, oh, uh, kind of related. Uh, I just want to mention that the Nintendo Switch Online members can now save 30% on the NES uh, controllers, the wireless controllers. So if you want to try this rolling technique for yourself with yeah. Tetris 99, maybe. Oh, that'd be interesting. You can now save 30% on these wireless NES controllers. And you get two of yeah. them. It comes in a two-pack. Um, and it's wireless, so you can, you can roll to your heart's content. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, where are we? Oh, uh, this yeah. we, we just saw this right before we started. Uh, apparently, according to the Nintendo subreddit, be careful when you find Nintendo games or <laughs> Nintendo game related ads on Facebook. They could be a scam. Uh, during the last two days, a lot of Facebook ads appeared related to some new Nintendo Switch games that are quote finally on PC. And you can download them for free from a website. The ads come with a free with a video of the game. This this are two of them. Don't know if they will stay there for long. Um I think it's a pretty obvious scam. But I mean I guess maybe most Facebook users wouldn't understand they'd probably be like, Oh, Nintendo finally put stuff on PC? That's crazy. Yeah. Uh this is I don't this can't this can't possibly work, right? It's a Facebook link. No, it's no, I'm not getting anything. Okay. I got I right now I'm watching somebody paint a sneaker. I watched some redheaded girl with sticky notes on her body. The other one I got what this is like a trend on Facebook. Somebody's not looking like they're looking off camera, they're not looking at what's going on. Somebody else in front of them is holding up signs that say like this is my this is my ex girlfriend. We broke up because I cheated on her. She doesn't know what I'm about to do, but it's gonna be something. And then it's either really funny, really awkward, or really heartbreaking. I fucking hate Facebook. It's 
I don't log into Facebook anymore. If you, I know I, we're in like some group chats together, Will. If yeah, if I message in a Facebook group chat, I am not reading it. I yeah, I I read it. I don't necessarily respond. I took the main Facebook app off my phone. I've had, it and off. my life has just been so much better since. I think I never put it on my iPhone when I switched from Android to iPhone. I think I just never put Facebook on there. I think, I think that's smart. Now that I'm on Facebook, I see the one of my friends who still uses Facebook regularly tag me in a post. I can't wait to see this. <laughs> Probably something related to our childhood. It's definitely the worst social media app. Oh, 100%. Um, anyway, I already found two fake websites where you land and you and make you download a launcher to get the game for free for a short period of time. These are the websites I found so far. Super Mario Kart 8 Deluxe.com with dashes between everything and Super Mario 3D.com. Uh, so warning, suspected phishing site ahead. Do we dare? Uh, dare, dare. Wait. Wait. I think this I think this is the scam. I've never seen it look like this before. Hmm. I feel like I I feel like I got to do it for science. Right? Science. Wait, is that how you spell fishing? Science prevail. Yes, PH. Okay. I did it. Uh All right. Mario Kart 8 buy it now $56. It doesn't say it's for PC though, but this looks like yeah. Nintendo, dude. This looks like it a, does. This looks like the Nintendo site. The uh, according to Google, the the phishing warning on Chrome is a red screen. Uh, I've never seen it red, like completely red before. Uh huh. So this is what it looks like in in real life. Uh, this is what it looks like on the actual Nintendo website. Yeah. And then you have this page on the bottom. Uh, and this is what... It, it's like very similar. <laughs> I could see people getting easily confused. Yeah. But it, nowhere on here does it say PC. Oh, PC TV mode. Tabletop mode, oh, okay. handheld mode. Yeah. But, but we're buying the PC version, you said. Very strange. Uh, I don't yes. think we need to uh, look at the uh, Mario. You know what? No. What is Super Mario 3D? We must know yeah. for science. Oh, 3D World. It's the same thing. It looks like the eShop page. Um, okay. Just be careful. Don't download any file from these websites and notice these ads as fraudulent to Facebook. I tried and downloaded... I tried and download the file to analyze it and find out more info about the scam, but I couldn't find anything yet. Note for the Nintendo subreddit moderators. I apologize if this post is still not compliant to the rules. I tried to edit it and I added some more info. Please tell me if there's any, something wrong. I feel like uh, he probably just shouldn't have put the links yeah. to it, but um, it stayed up. So stay up for three days. I mean, I know everybody here knows already not to click on shit like that. Yeah. Uh, one of the re uh, responses was, it was a zip file with a couple of files in it, some translations, and an EXE file. Uh, they're using a disassembler to get some more information from it, but they couldn't find anything yet. It's not really their field. Yeah, so it looks like somebody, somebody in the subreddit is like, looking into what it is <laughs> that would kind of make a good video but i, yeah. I need to get a, a shitty computer that i don't care about to yeah. like download the file and see what's up with it <laughs> yeah um cloudfire is uh that is a cloudfire page i think you might be using uh that uh a uh, specific dns um maybe i don't i don't know i think i use the google dns um oh i'm using a, a vpn right now that might explain that um okay so again i think 
it's obvious to everybody who's watching this that that's clearly a scam right we we know nintendo uh yeah. but uh the facebook moms out there and people who are just like oh i'll play mario kart but i don't yeah. have a switch oh wait i can play it on my pc that's crazy you know josh that you went to high school with he might download that anyway uh moving on just uh, use a virtual so machine that's true i can do that yeah Uh, next up, we got David Hader weighing in on Metal Gear Solid remake rumors. This is the Metal Gear himself. Yes. <laughs> uh, the voice of Solid Snake, David Hader, has suggested that a Metal Gear Solid remake could be in development for current gen consoles. The claim was made during a lengthy discussion with YouTuber Dan Allen in which the voice actor said he'd been told that a new version of the Hideo Kojima classic could be in the works. I thought it was just a rumor until the day before yesterday when I got a text from one of the insiders saying they heard it might really be happening, he said. I only had some confirmation that it might not be a rumor a couple of days ago, and even that was still a rumor. But now it's an, indus but now it's an industry rumor, so that tends to be a little bit more accurate. Uh, Hater added that if Konami were to remake Metal Gear Solid, they would likely need to re-record Snake's voice work due to the age of the original recordings, adding that he thinks he can still pull it off, pull off the young Snake voice. They can't use the original PlayStation recordings because the sound card isn't anywhere near as good as today's consoles, he said. Uh, so what happens is you run those old tapes and you can hear traffic going on outside mm -hmm. and all this room noise because we didn't. Uh, cause, because we didn't do it in a studio, we did it in some living room. We did re-record the entire. We did re-record the entire game for the GameCube remake, the Twin Snakes, so they could theoretically use those recordings. But again, I don't think the quality would match what needs to be done. Um, VGC first reported Konami softening its stance over licensing its game properties earlier this year, and reports uh, revealing that the company has outsourced a new Silent Hill game. Uh, Konami Japan's bosses uh, are understood to have historically pushed back against most pitches to outsource their game, their key game brands, which is a big reason why the previous pitches for Silent Hill games, such as one by Until Dawn Studio Supermassive, weren't greenlit. Well, however, following the disappointing performance of recent in-house titles, Metal Gear Survive and Contra Rogue Corps, uh, VGC sources said the company has become more willing to contract outside studios for its major franchises in addition to silent hill we were told that konami has plans to work on castlevania and metal gear solid games via external companies but any potential releases are still years away konami recently confirmed that it would participate in the all digital e3 this year set to take place in june uh i have little faith that konami is going to do anything yeah um if if there's a Metal Gear remake happening, someone else is doing it. I think Konami has nothing yeah. to do with that. I mean, they, I can definitely see them outsourcing it if they, if that's the new track they're taking on, which would be good because I don't think Konami has the capability to make a full on remake of something like Metal Gear Solid. Mm -hmm. Clearly, <laughs> uh, I I believe David Hayter when he says that he doesn't know anything about it. Uh, right, he sounds like he's being legit about it yeah I, it definitely like i don't think he has any reason to lie about something like this you know if he's heard rumor that there's gonna they're working on a metal gear remake i'm sure they're probably working on a metal gear remake which makes when, me think that they're not working on it because because <laughs> i feel like he would know they would probably want him for that well i don't know because if it's a remake, they don't necessarily need to get him. They I, didn't like Kojima didn't get him from Metal Gear Five. So, so, so there's two there's two ways to go about a remake. There's there's to appease the fans, right? Because, because they're mad right now with yeah. how Metal Gear's been treated, and there's uh fuck the fans. Let's just cash in on on this this dormant franchise. Um, if yeah. they want to appease the fans, got to get David Hayter because uh, fans were upset that he wasn't Snake in the last one. Right. Um, and if they want to fuck the fans, then uh, they then they could do whatever the hell they want. So, 
and it will probably end up being bad because then they'll yeah. just be doing a, a cheap cash grab so uh basically what i'm trying to say is if david hater if they're doing a new metal gear and david hater has no idea that they're doing it uh it's probably going to be bad yeah Zizo I mean, says david hater is also a huge asshole uh what did he do to you <laughs> yeah <laughs> i don't know i don't i don't i don't uh, yeah I, uh, I, I don't know if that if he is. Never met never met the man. <laughs> never met the man. Uh, I do know that when Konami did the atrocious uh Silent Hill HD collection for the 316 PS3, they re-recorded all the dialogue for Silent Hill 2 and 3. Oh. Like completely. And they eventually found a way to put the Silent Hill 2 dialogue the original silent hill 2 dialogue in the game so you can switch between the two but they they could not put the silent hill 3 dialogue back in for technical and logistical reasons interesting yeah uh, brand brand and says pretty sure he parks in handicap spots <laughs> um, i mean don't do that <laughs> i know he's I know he likes fans and stuff. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what he's what his personal life. All like. I ever hear, all I ever see and hear about is him recording special like snake messages to people. Yeah, that's all I ever see. Yeah. Um, I do want, I do really want a, a Metal Gear Solid remake. That game is sick, and I think it would be a lot of fun to play that, especially if they use the friggin' same engine that they did Metal Gear Solid Five in. That would be incredible. Yeah, yeah I think it, like, because I was actually thinking about this. There's no real way to play Metal Gear Solid One or Four outside of their original systems, because I mean, Metal Gear Solid, you can play on your PS3 and Vita. We almost lost that capability mm -hmm. uh, not too long ago. And Metal Gear Solid 4 has a lot of very specific references to being on the PlayStation 3 that you can't just, like, port it over to another system without ripping those out. Yeah. And, like, a lot of those references are, like, big parts of the game i mean they all have that stuff but right but, but, but you in on the place metal gear solid 4 really does go hard. metal gear solid 4 dives really hard into it and metal gear solid 1 you know a big part of uh what's his name psycho mantis's boss battle is he reads your memory card and specifically tells you that you play castlevania uh Twin Snakes is a different game than Metal Gear Solid One. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, Twin Snakes was a completely rebuilt from the ground up, specifically for the GameCube, and it has a lot of specific references to being <laughs> on the GameCube. Yes, <laughs> a lot of them. So you can't necessarily port that game over either. Um, I do like Twin Snakes a lot. Twin um, Snakes is great. I don't care what anybody says. They have the PS1 game on PC, and it's pretty good. Yes. I don't know if that's still available, though. I don't know. I have no idea. Um, I don't know. I, 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 would, I, I would like to play a completely remade Metal Gear yeah. Solid 1 with all of the ridiculousness in, uh, in the Fox engine, or just some modern engine. Yeah, uh, but the Fox engine was I, I, Metal Gear Solid Five was amazing. The the it's unfortunate that the the story kind of just <laughs> never finished. Um, it never came to an end. Who knows if it would have if if yeah. Kojima was able to finish it. Um, but uh, it was it was technically it was an amazing game, and it, it the gameplay loop was incredible. It it's just unfortunate that uh it kind of just yeah. fizzled out towards the end um i would love to see the original metal gear in that style anyway uh we got treble gifting more subs stop giving us money yeah giving us too much money now 
Unless you're Elon save, Musk, then give me all save your money. Your, if you're save your money, Elon go to college. Musk, give us all then, yeah, money. give us all your money, and and a Tesla. And a, I could use a Tesla. Yeah, uh, I I legit need to go car shopping, so you <laughs> save me some trouble. <sighs> Thank you for gifting three more subs, Travel. Yeah. Uh, Itch.io joins the Epic Store. This is not good news. <laughs> uh, the indie the India online storefront itch.io is coming as a downloadable app to the Epic Store. Yes, oh. you read that correctly. The digital storefront itch.io, a popular platform for distributing indie games of all shapes and sizes, is coming to a different storefront along with a handful of other PC apps. The addition will put itch.io in the front of the Epic Game Store's roughly 31.3 million active daily users and bringing over 200,000 titles from the itch.io uh, store to the Epic to Epic customers. Itch.io is a collection of some of the most unique, interesting, and independent creations you'll find on the web. A representative from itch.io itch.io told Polygon via email, "Bringing the itch.io app to the Epic Game Store will give us an opportunity to widen the audience of people who can discover the div the diverse collection of indie works that we host." A representative from Epic confirm, uh, confirmed the details of how it works for, to Polygon. Basically, users will download itch.io on the store as they would any other app or game. Once it's downloaded and you launch it, it's its own thing. Epic will not take a percentage of sales from those games. Currently, developers selling their games on itch.io get to choose what percentage of their sales go towards itch.io, meaning that creators could now get the exposure of all sorry meaning that creators could now get the exposure of all of all more users on a storefront that takes a lower cut of the sales for comparison steam uses a tiered system where valve takes between 20 and 30 percent cut depending on how much money a game makes while epic games take a 12 percent cut across the board the move affirms the idea that the epic game store is moving towards creating its own app store Rather than just sticking to games, Spotify came to the Epic Store late last year and was the first non-gaming app to arrive on the storefront. In, a ditch, in addition to itch.io, Epic Store will also add iHeartRadio, open, source, open source web browser Brave, 2D to 3D modeling generator Kenshape, and the painting software um, Krita. And itch.io and other apps are available on the Epic Store now. This is a much... This is uh, this is better news than I thought. I thought uh, I thought Epic was buying itch.io, and that would have yeah. been terrible because itch.io yeah, that that been... is great for indie for indies. Yeah, it's probably like one of the best, if not the best, platforms for indie game developers. It sounds like Epic Games, Epic Games is a massive, uh, you know, like a like like a corporate overlord, <laughs> hmm. but. It seems like they're trying really hard to uh, be more creator friendly. Yeah. Uh, especially with their 12% cut of, of games that are sold on the Epic Store. That is phenomenal. Um, yeah. For, especially for a company that size who, who can totally compete with Valve and, and, uh, and uh, they can totally compete with Steam and Origin yeah. on their own with the same cut and everything but uh taking 12 percent, taking a much lower stake is pretty freaking awesome that has nothing to yeah. do with the uh, aqua that has nothing to do with putting itch.io on the store it sounds like no. they're just making it an app and they're not going to take any cut from the sales within that app which is yeah, something which is that's great that, yeah that's something epic has been fighting apple and and android about yeah they've been trying to fight them about in-app purchases and stuff yeah it sounds like they're they're um putting their money where their mouth is they're saying you can use the epic store and we won't charge you for microtransactions yeah that's uh that's pretty good on them uh app app uh circa rvn says epic is trying to prove to Apple that an app store can take a lower percentage and allow apps to have their own sales. Yeah. I mean, 
they have to do this because they have an ongoing court case <laughs> that it'd yeah. be really messed up if they if they weren't uh putting into practice what they were trying to get for themselves um but i think that's great i think this is actually good news i, I originally thought this was bad news uh this is good news i think now I'm, I'm coming back around on it. if you don't know itch.io is a great uh it's a website or i guess a, a storefront where you can uh get a bunch of indie games like any but pretty much anybody yeah. can just upload uh games to this yeah uh and you can and, download uh, it. yeah and it's a lot of like weird experimental stuff that you know doesn't really has a really hard time finding a home on like steam or epic usually um it has like early access features where like you can upload a, a very early beta of your game and then keep uh updating it and changing it as you get feedback from it Yeah, it's yeah. It, it, it's 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 cool. This this is this is yeah. good news. Uh, Travel again gifted more subs, <laughs> and he said, "Don't tell me what to do with my money, you socialists." <laughs> He's got a point. Yeah. Uh, Lonos again, notable asshole in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't understand, or is it Lubick? I don't remember. He says, nobody was using itch.io anyway, so I don't see the harm. <laughs> Actually, can I look up a chat log? That's my new favorite thing now, is looking up uh, chat logs of people in the chat. <laughs> how, do I, how do I bring it up? It's Messages. not the, uh... okay. Did I do it right? Uh, oh, it's only for... Oh, no, here it goes. Oh, boy. Yeah, no, yeah, no. This is the this is the known asshole. Uh, don't look <laughs> through people's logs. Shut up. Do what we want. Also, no, my IP address didn't get leaked. That was my private IP. Good luck. Uh, good luck doing anything with that. <laughs> my private IP through my VPN. Lonos was the asshole, not me. <laughs> uh, anyway. Uh, next news. CD Projekt Red only refunded 30,000 copies of Cyberpunk. Yes. Uh, CD Projekt, uh, Cyberpunk 2077's disastrous launch led to very few refunds, according to CD Projekt Red CFO the CFO, uh, who shared <laughs> details on the situation during during an earnings call with investors. The dystopian cyberpunk RPG sold 13.7 million copies, but the developer only issued 30,000 refunds. I am part of the problem. <laughs> Players were able to get refunds through Sony and Microsoft, which were not included in this tally. Uh, in December 2020, Sony not only offered full refunds for customers, who purchased the digital copy, but they removed the game from the PlayStation Store. Cyberpunk has yet to return to the PlayStation Store despite patches that fixed hundreds of bugs and varying levels of, with varying levels of success. Uh, CD Projekt Red set up a Help Me Refund program to help dissatisfied customers, which cost approximately $2.17 million. 95% uh, of these refunds have been processed uh, the CFO explained that on the call that the final 5% of refunds are currently being processed, but are taking a little longer due to complications. Please take into consideration that we are refunding people all over the world and working with different banking systems. It's not an easy task, he said. Uh, CD Projekt Red has been forced to change track on Cyberpunk after the game's launch because the game's issues on Xbox One and PlayStation 4. Um, in February, the, the developer had... Con uh, the developer had to contend with a cyber attack from hackers uh, who claimed to have the source code for Cyberpunk Witcher 3, Gwent, and an unreleased version of Witcher 3. Uh, the patch was delayed from February to March because of the cyber attack. Despite these issues, the Polish developer enjoyed a profitable 2020, taking in over $560 million in revenue. Future updates for Cyberpunk is currently in development, including an online mode. So... They only did 30,000 refunds, but this doesn't include 
the console versions. So what it's did, only the ones they did directly. And which are those? It wasn't Steam, right? Probably probably PC. Yeah, but most people are getting that on Steam, aren't they? Well, yeah. <sighs> Yes, but Steam has a very strict like return policy. Oh, so the anything two, two hours. That, yeah, which is not a lot of time for an RPG like Cyberpunk. So anything past that, they probably have to handle themselves. True. It's all physical copies, I would gather. Says brand, and that. Well, yeah, there's also that. Uh, his his this guy's name is Neolubowitz. There's a lot of consonants. It's Polish. I could have pronounced Pitor, but the last <laughs> the last name got through me. Um, I mean, I I I could see, I could see this. I could see. I mean, it's not like it sound like CD Projekt Red refunded thirty thousand copies of Cyberpunk out of thirteen million. It it sounds like they're they are trying to stop uh uh like the way the way this was presented to me was that they only refunded thirty thousand copies what the hell man what about all the rest of the ones but really it's just that not a lot of people did the refund thing yeah it was just a surprise to me i mean i I'm, wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people like they bought the game they're willing to stick it out you know see if it gets better um or they just don't care enough um I'm of that camp. I don't care enough. Yeah. I, I bought the game Same. pretty much knowing I wasn't going to play too much of it. So <laughs> uh, this this isn't uh, I, I got my one or two live streams out of it. That's that's all. Yeah. That's all I could hope for. And maybe one day it'll be updated where there'll be something interesting to me that, that I would want. Yeah. Play. So that's why I'm keeping it around. Um, you play yeah, a I'm, lot of it. I feel like I did. And I also feel like I didn't. <laughs> I did give up at a certain point and I'm, I want to go back because mm-hmm. I am interested in it, but I, I don't feel it's at a level where I can comfortably play it and have a good time. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm right there. Yeah. So I am playing doom eternal and that is very good. No bug, no lag, no bugs. Oh, I did watch uh Dan Seibert and Gilly's video on the DLC. Mm-hmm. And they, the first thing they said was, "If you haven't finished Doom Eternal, don't watch this video because it's nothing but spoilers." I watched it anyway because I'm a rock star. <laughs> uh, and like they they're going on about how great the story is and whatnot. This this story is terrible <laughs> in Doom Eternal. Like it is, it's worse than Doom 2016, and that didn't have a great story to begin with. But Doom 2016 at least knew. You weren't here for the story. They gave you just enough to keep you going. Mm -hmm. This one, like, it just drops you in the middle of nowhere. There is definitely a game in between Doom 2016 and Doom Eternal that they're not telling you about. (laughs) And it's just, like, throwing all this lore and crap at you. And it's just like, I just want to stab somebody through the skull and then take that skull and throw it at somebody else. Just let me do that, man. <laughs> yeah, that's what. Also, you... way too much platforming. Uh, I'm interested in that. When I saw that in the trailers for it, I was like, "Ooh, this might be." It's uh... not as not as fun as <laughs> you think it's gonna be. Like first person platforming is very difficult. Very few games get it right. I, I, I like movement this one, shooters. Yeah, I'm a big fan of oh, movement yeah. shooters. Oh, you'd love this because it's it's all about like moving as fast as you can. Right. Around and away from demons. But when you throw in like just legit platforming sections. <laughs> no thank you, sir. Um uh, you saw Mortal Kombat. How was that? I did see Mortal Kombat. Uh not bad. It is the second best live action Mortal Kombat movie. Uh, let's get that out of the way first. It's not better than the original uh one from the nineties. This one had, especially like in the middle, it, it goes through a very long training montage of like trying to get the the audience insert character Cole Young up to task and able to, you know, fight in the Mortal Kombat tournament. But it's not really 
interesting or exciting. Um, a lot of the problems with the movie have to do with the fact that they made up a new character, Cole Young, um, who is supposed to be the audience insert character. And we spend a lot of time like getting to know him and stuff. But he's not all that interesting. The stuff they give him to do isn't all that interesting, especially when he's surrounded by all the Mortal Kombat characters you already know and love and would much rather watch them yeah. do something <laughs> Like, Sonya Blade is right there. She could have easily have been the audience insert if they really needed somebody like that. I always pictured Liu Kang as the main character of Mortal Kombat. Right. And, you know, he is. Like, in the games, and the original Because in the games, he he's, like, the only, like, normal dude. Uh, Johnny right. Cage, I put aside because he's, like, an over-the-top, like, yeah, flamboyant, he's... like, Hollywood yeah. guy. He's got like right. a thing. Liu Kang is just like a martial arts guy. And he's right. in he's a the fighting classic tournament. Straight man, yeah. Yeah, so that's why I always pictured him as the main character. I yeah. don't understand why they just didn't do that. I mean, I understand if they wanted to take a different route and like focus on a different character, but there are other characters that they could have focused on who are already established and who are much more interesting uh, than Cole was. A big part of the game, a big part of the movie was trying to... Um, developing like they made power like the powers you get a thing like so the training was to try and get Cole up to learning what his abilities are and I still don't really know what they are like he grows like a weird armor skin and I think it absorbs kinetic energy like Black Panther's costume does but then it doesn't release and also he gets a tonfa for some reason what the hell's uh, that it's, um, it's like a, a billy club oh yeah I don't know. It's the fighting scenes were great. Were very interesting. It's very bloody and very rated R, but not as much as you think it's going to be. They do perform some good fatalities and Kung Lao gets probably the best one. Um, the guy who plays Kano is fantastic. He's he runs away with the whole thing. Um, the Scorpion and Sub-Zero sections are the best parts of the movie. Um, I am. I am gay for Ludi Lin's Kung Lao. I don't care. No, uh, sorry. Ludi Lin plays Liu Kang. I I am for that. I don't care. Um, that's my type of man right there. Um, yeah. Um, oh, you got you just got lost in, uh, in in. I just I did. I just got lost. You just got Ludi lost Lin's thinking lab. about him again. Uh, well, one of the things this movie does, which I hate when movies, because there's a lot of characters they got to introduce, but they everybody gets a hero introduction. Mm -hmm. where it's like who are you i am lu kang who are you i am kung lao who is that lord raiden like they stopped the movie to give the hero introduction for it right. when a normal movie would just casually uh work it into conversation uh it's that it definitely suffers from a lot of like modern big action movie cliches and tropes like trying to be more like a Marvel film rather than trying to be like a Mortal Kombat movie, even though it does have moments of being a pure Mortal Kombat movie. Um, but I think overall, like there's a good time to be had. I did like how Liu Kang uh, spams a leg sweep on Kano. Like he just keeps leg sweeping him like, like cheaters do in the video game, which I thought was really funny. Um, there, there's a lot of like really weird and bad editing in it. Like I actually rewound this one part back a couple of times. Uh, Sonia says something as she's walking towards camera, and Kano says like a, makes a snide remark. Then it cuts to Sonia turning back, but then it also cuts to a different shot of her turning the other way because there's like sound going on and stuff. It's just really poorly edited in a lot of spots and there were a lot of obvious ADR tracks where somebody off screen says fatality or flawless victory <laughs> or something like that um to, 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 the way I, as somebody who hasn't watched it and has only seen like trailers and stuff it seems to me like yeah. it's just gonna be murder porn and it's surprisingly like, not I feel like that's the only reason people are watching that movie is to see right. the fatalities and shit 
I mean, when it does get when it like I said, when it does get to the fighting and like the the fatalities and stuff, it's it's very good. It's just it's, it's all this other crap in the middle that you got to like work through. You know, that said, I was not bored with it. I would recommend it, especially if you like Mortal Kombat. Just know that the best Mortal Kombat movie was still the PG-13 movie from the 90s. <laughs> Somehow. Uh, Lenosa says Ed Boon said the, the Scorpion said Scorpion is the main character. Uh, Ed Boon is only saying that because Scorpion is the most popular character. Ed Boon saying that because Scorpion is his favorite character. <laughs> True. Ed, there is no way they made Mortal Kombat with the thought that Scorpion, this guy who's the same, who, the same exact thing yeah. as this other guy, just a palette swap, we're gonna make him the main character. There's no way yeah. that, that that. Should we get into that. spoilers? Do you want me to get into spoilers? I, or... I I could give two shits about this movie, okay. and I feel like if anybody is like wanting to see this movie, they have seen it already. So okay. go, I don't care. Go ahead, spoil it. Close, cover your ears for five minutes. So a big twist that you see coming a mile away is Cole is a descendant of Scorpion. Okay. I watching this movie, I got the sense that, okay, Cole hasn't figured out his powers yet. He's obviously a descendant of Scorpion. They tell him he's a descendant of Scorpion at one point. So clearly he's just going to become Scorpion. Somebody in the chat said that. That that that, that they thought that was gonna happen. Yeah, yeah. It, it's like that's clearly the way they were gonna go. And then at some point, somebody decided, no, let's just bring back the you know the original Scorpion and have him fight the final boss of the movie, which is Sub Zero, and have Cole just off trying to get his family out of the ice that Sub Zero put him in. That's so. Stupid. So Cole doesn't even like save the day. He just is off on the side while scorpion takes care of business that's even more useless than i could have imagined <laughs> yeah like like the the guy who plays uh call i think his name's lewis tan he's a great actor he's a great martial artist they i don't know why they did him like that <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it it should have just been Liu Kang. that's stupid it should have just been honestly like like i said it could have been sonya they could have made a good movie because her whole, whole character arc is they they so they make it so the way you get entered into the Mortal Kombat tournament is you have to have like the dragon birthmark on you. Yeah, I saw that in the trailer. Yeah, which is not part of the games, but whatever. And Sonya is the only like character who doesn't have that. You get it by either being born with it or you kill somebody who has it and it transfers over to you. So her character arc is she doesn't have it, so they won't let her train to enter the Mortal Kombat tournament. Mm -hmm. So you would think she, uh, she finds a way to prove herself without it. Or, uh, you know, maybe she does, because she's also like bickering with Kano. Maybe like her arc is she finally finds a way to defeat Kano, who does have it, um, and then enter the tournament. But no, she like, she beats Kano and then gets her powers and learns her powers off screen really quickly. <laughs> And then it's just there, like to help out in a in a random battle, somewhere. Like that could have been your big character arc, your big audience insert character, or have Cole be Johnny Cage. Do, does it? That, oh, that, that would have worked. That, that would have worked perfectly. Does does everybody who's I and mean, only one person wins the tournament, right? Don't you die? Well, if if, if that's, you like, isn't everybody so who gets the mark? Twist. Aren't they all dying except for one of them? Basically, but the twist is, and I actually didn't think this was a bad idea. They don't actually do the tournament. What's happening what is Shang Tsung is like sending Sub Zero and Melina and other characters out to find people with the dragon birthmark and kill them before the tournament starts. Oh, okay. So, like, Raiden gets Liu Kang, Kung Lao, um, and eventually Sonya, Jax, Cole, and Kano at first to train to stop them from doing that. Which is not, which I think is a really interesting and clever take on the subject. Um, but again, they focus the whole thing around a, a boring character. <laughs> so. 
uh so so the so was the tournament fake or did it just they just didn't have it they just didn't have it so it's a have, real thing the in the in the world that just never happened yeah okay that's very strange this is yeah. all very confusing <laughs> Uh, I'm never gonna see this movie. I care less. Okay. Uh, I mean, I I, mean, I, 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 I feel like I would probably watch and have an okay time, but I don't need an okay yeah. time. You know, that's two hours of my life. That's just okay. I don't need that. If I mean, if you put it on the background while you're working or whatnot, and like you look up every once in a while and you see, oh, that's a cool fight. Like, because there are great fight scenes in this, right? Um, but yeah, I like I watched it. I'm glad I watched it. I didn't have a bad time. Um, but yeah. Uh, original Mortal Kombat still still holds up, <laughs> still still the one to beat, friends. Last bit of news that we have here, really yes. quickly. Sega's what? Sega NFTs are coming from a new what? Why are they making NFTs? Because fuck you, that's why. <laughs> this is from TechRaptor.net. This this blew up my Twitter feed for some reason, and like I'm trying to find like an article about it from like a reputable gaming source mm -hmm. but all i could find were all these like lower tier <laughs> websites <laughs> no offense to techraptor.net <laughs> uh nfts are non-fungible tokens are relatively new concept that allows someone to own a unique copy of a digital asset through a variety of means sega nfts are coming as the company is now getting in on the market with a newly announced collaboration that expects their first products this summer. As announced in this press release, uh, translated uh, via DeepL on Reset Era, Sega is teaming up with uh, DoubleJump.Tokyo Inc. In, and investing in them to sell a variety of digital assets from Sega's IPs, like visual art from the time of launch and video and background music used in games. Sega continues by mentioning that Double Jump Tokyo's extensive track record uh, NFTs were only created in 2015, so one wonders what is extensive um, in the NFT market, and that Sega hopes to promote aggressive business development beyond NFT using blockchain blockchain technology while enhancing the potential of games and creating new emotional experiences for users around the world. Of uh, on Twitter, the the announcement tweet was met with harsh criticism from both English and Japanese Sega fans. Many were quick to point out that Sonic the Hedgehog, their biggest IP, is a character whose games had environmental themes based around mankind's impact on the environment. Yuji Naka, the main programmer behind the original Sonic the Hedgehog, confirmed this in an interview last year where he described Dr. Robotnik as a slightly radical representation of all humanity and the impact humanity is having on nature. Uh, NFT and blockchain technology are notorious for, among other things, having extreme energy costs. One article estimates that a single um, Ethereum transaction uses as much electrical power as an EU resident uses in four days. Syndicated cartoonist and Sonic fan Olive Ray Brinker said she wishes that Sonic NFTs were surprising, but we live in a world where Lorax car commercials we live in a world with Lorax car commercials referring to the bizarre advertising tie-in to Dr. Seuss's uh, ecological friendly creature. Um, yeah, I'm not really... Well, first of all, I don't understand what the fuck they're doing. <laughs> I don't understand yeah. what what Sega is, is doing with NFTs after all of that. It, I, I think they probably just heard NFTs are the new thing and you can make a lot of money with them. So they're like, yeah. okay, we'll we'll do that. We'll sell some old art or whatever. Um, yeah, I I have there is a lot of rumblings about how uh, uh, cryptocurrencies are very bad for the environment because uh, it's really just that um, it's computing power that doesn't do anything. It's li literally yeah. it doesn't it. There's zero purpose other than it uh, creates money. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just kind of a waste of energy. Um, so yeah, I could yeah, it it's it, that's why it's that's to my understanding why it's uh bad for the environment. And also there's like you see these freaking server farms that are just insane and that sucks yeah. up a lot of energy. It kind of encourages people to just waste energy. Um Yeah. Oh, it definitely does. But I mean but uh, I mean does our government do that with our own money? Do we just 
do we just fart you know we just fart money out is that a waste of energy too it's mm-hmm. a waste of paper it's a waste yeah, i mean well i mean most currency transactions nowadays is not you know paper it's all digital so true but it's you know there's no computers like i mean because the amount of like energy and time that goes into developing blockchain and bitcoin and nfts is a lot more than your standard government currency it 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 does encourage uh the the waste of energy which is which is uh because it encourages people to just get like a massive pc and just run it all day yeah um but anyway uh yeah, I think this is. I think this whole thing's dumb. I think that. Yeah. I, th- I think. I think they're too little, too late. They should have done this two months ago when NFTs were blowing up. Now I think NFTs yeah. are on the, on the downswing. Well, yeah, because everybody's now stupid. Yeah. Uh, I should also note that this is specifically Sega of Japan, right? Doing this, not Sega of America or Sega of Europe. Um, people seem to f- get them confused. Sega Japan, like they're all owned by Sega Japan, but Sega Japan often does their own thing. Whereas Sega America and Sega Europe do their own thing. Right. So. Um, Mecha Dragon with 10 bits. Talk about the localization of the great attorney brothers. I don't know anything about that. Oh, isn't that. um, It's the new Phoenix Wright game. I just Googled it and nothing came up. Uh, come on. Yeah, I'm getting the, actual... The Great Ace Attorney Adventures? I think that's it. There's like a thousand Ace Attorney games. <laughs> the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles? That I heard about. Cool. I mean, I've never played an Ace Attorney game. I'm not really uh, invested. I almost bought the Phoenix... The, not the Phoenix, right? That is Phoenix, right? I almost bought the... Harvey Birdman Ace Attorney game. <gasps> Wait, what? That was on the Wii. And it was like made by Capcom. It was like the same engine. Oh my god, I didn't know that. Yeah. The 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 entire original cast was in it. That's incredible. Yeah. This is one of the best shows to ever grace TV. I know. Did you know that Bird Girl has a spinoff now? No. Yeah. I kind of I want to watch it because it looks really good. What is the What is it called? It's called, it's called Bird Girl. She takes over the the law firm. <laughs> oh my god. Judy Ken Seven is the daughter of Phil Ken Seven, who fights crime as Bird Girl. When Phil Ken Seven is killed in an accident, he names Bird Girl as the successor of Seven and Seven, with help from her friend Meredith and the Mind Taker. <laughs> Bird Girl <laughs> was able to get Judy to the new CEO to be the new CEO of Seven and Seven while still fighting crime on the side. That is fucking awesome. Yeah. Uh, the series premiered April 5th. It just happened. Yeah. I need a trailer. Oh, the po- the whole pilot is on YouTube. Right the now. whole pilot's on YouTube, yeah. Maybe I'll just freaking watch that. I'm going to add that to my watch later. Yeah. That is freaking amazing. Uh, Tech Nanner says dangly parts. <laughs> 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 All right. We're late again. Uh, oh, hey, of course. But, but you know what time it is, though. Do it, Quit boy. Quit of the week. Quit of the week. This is from um, Exterior. Michael? Michelle? How do you say that? I don't know. Uh, she tweets about Sonic a lot. She said, uh, I asked the nurse giving me giving my vaccine... I asked the nurse giving my vaccine if I could use a Band-Aid I brought from home. And she was like, I don't see why not. And now she sees why not. <laughs> and it's uh, it's a Band-Aid she made 
that says that that has shadow on it and it says chaos control the spread <laughs> and she made more uh there's oh there's two different chaos control the spread there's one that just is a great design that has all of the knuckles uh like chaos uh, uh chaos emerald pieces yeah um, there's one king boom boo boo because it's like a band-aid and there's one that's yeah. just a, a stage start like screen that says corona escape instead of city escape yeah cute i wish i had known about this when <laughs> i got my shot well i still have time i have my second one there you go oh uh f i mean i didn't put this in because i didn't know what we could say about it but uh it showed up on my my explore panel on the side. The PlayStation Network is currently down. <laughs> just just so, all day. Just that's it. Uh, recently. <laughs> so anybody looking to play PS4 or PS5? Sorry. That's <laughs> <sighs> that's very Sony of them. <laughs> it's, yeah, it seems it's, to go down every every once in a while. It it doesn't. I mean, it doesn't say why. I don't think Sony has said anything about it yet. So. All right. Well, anyway, now let's talk to you people. Yes. Uh, if you, uh, bah. Yep. If you love to comment on last week's version of Wolf Den Podcast over on the YouTube channel, Wolf Den Podcast, this is the part of the show we will finally answer you. And of course, ladies and gentlemen watching us at home, Please start leaving your questions and comments because we will get to them when we are done with everybody else. This just said my friend Jerry is playing PlayStation right now, and he says it's fine. Okay. Uh, nope, wrong channel. Uh, last week's Wolf Den Live on the YouTube comments. Jeff Thompson, the Wolf Bros, learning how to say Oregon. <laughs> Had me crying. Big love for the show. You're both really great. Thank you. Oregon. I, re I refuse. Uh, <laughs> I know Bob94, do you, says, don't hate me for this, but I think F-Zero would make a good mobile game. Fuck you. <laughs> I fear that it, that Nintendo might be thinking the same thing. I fear that they might be thinking the same thing. Honestly, I think there's nothing wrong with mobile games. I think mobile games get a bad rap because there's a lot of crap yeah. ones. Yeah. And there's a lot of ones that just tr that just only exist to take your money. But I think that there's also a lot of phenomenal mo mobile games. Yeah. So um I think there's nothing wrong. I think there would be nothing wrong with an F0 mobile game to be perfectly yeah, honest. Yeah. I have, I mean, I know uh people will be expecting a big budget, you know, Switch game because you can do a lot more and it'd be more exciting if it was on Switch, but at this point just any acknowledgement that F0 exists from Nintendo outside of Smash Brothers would be nice. <laughs> Yeah, I think fans would be really upset if it went to mobile yeah. before going to console. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Graham Richards, Graham Richardson says, "Will and Bob as a Kentuckian, Kentuckian." Yeah, thank you, Will, who moved away now in Los Angeles. I was thrilled when I learned I could get AL81 at a store called Rocket Fizz. Oh, they had those oh. on Long Island. I don't know if they still do. A candy store that imports sodas from all over the country. There are rocket fizzes all over LA, and I believe that they exist in New York as well. They do. They did. I don't know if they still do. There is yeah. a bit of a price bump to cover the import, but it's pretty reasonable. Hope that helps. Regardless, it made me happy to see you reporting the drink of the gods. <laughs> we there was a rocket fizz in Levittown, I think. Really. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. Look it up. I, I don't know if it's still I'm there. Looking. It was pretty expensive, but yeah, they know they had. It was literally just a soda store. Yeah, <laughs> it just had all different types of sodas, and they had some wacky ones. Um. Anyway, Sinmar RS says, if "Oh Bob, yeah, it's still there. It's still there. Yeah, it's in the it's in the shopping center with the uh... where the GameStop is, like next oh. to Kohl's. Yeah, damn." Well, there you go. I might have to. I might have to check this shit out. Uh, if Bob loves platformers, then why hasn't he played Ori and the Will of the Wisps yet? I played Ori in the Blind Forest, and I thought it was just okay. I thought everybody like made such a big deal about it. Um, I also played it on a Microsoft Surface Pro Two, so that <laughs> might be why I didn't like it so much. 
that could do it. But I really just thought it was all right. Um, Joss or Jose says, Scooch is great. I loved how Bob defended. No, we're, uh, we're not making a big deal about that. Instead, catering to people who don't like it. It was really heartwarming to see. Uh, well, thank you, Joss. I appreciate it. Everybody likes Scooch. Scooch is great. Uh, yeah. I want to. It's hard to stream with him, man. Sometimes, like, he was great <laughs> on the podcast. Um, when I stream a game with him, sometimes I want to rip my fucking eyeballs out. But I know that he is very entertaining. <laughs> And I stand by that. I think he is. Uh, uh, he's, I think, the best Twitch streamer that I know of that I'm like friends with. Um, but uh, part of the problem with him being so entertaining is that he is a nightmare to to actually try to do try to play a game with. <laughs> um, anyway, now we're talking to you people real quick. Yes. Uh, Mega Dragon with 21 bits. Also, Bob, good news. I drew a Pikachu last night that actually looked like a Pikachu. Damn! And doesn't not look like crap. Congratulations. There you go. Good for you. Wow, Bob, how dare you? Fuck you, Ian. Yeah. Start playing marbles on... Do marbles tournaments for $20, and maybe you'll, you you could be as good as Scootish. <laughs> <laughs> Bobby, what is a good Switch multiplayer game to play with friends? Mario Party now. Yeah. A good Switch multiplayer game? Smash Bros. Scott oh, Pilgrim vs. the World. Super Mario 3D World is also great. Oh, and Monster Hunter. Duh. Yeah. Play with my marbles, you Wally Waluigi you looking ass. <laughs> <laughs> um i gotta ask do you like waffles or pancakes all right this is a long long fought discussion here on this twitch channel okay uh the answer is waffles yes the only reason pancakes are are in the same league as waffles is because for some reason people decide to put the fixins on the pancakes and not the waffles. You know what I mean? Like, you go to IHOP and they have all yeah. these fancy pancakes. The fancy pancakes are great. I love a good fancy pancake. But I would like it better if it was a waffle. Yeah. Give me the fancy waffle. It would be better than the fancy pancake. The, the only thing I will give pancakes over waffles is that they're easier to make. Okay. Because on a pancake, all, all you need is, you know, a flat surface to flip them. A waffle, you need to bust out a specific tool, a waffle iron. And waffle irons range from garbage <laughs> to pretty good. I got a pretty good waffle iron. It's the it's huge. It weighs a ton. And every time I want to use it, I got to take it out of the cabinet, haul it over to the counter, make sure there's space on the counter, plug it in, open it up, and then cleaning it is not easy because you can't remove the, the griddle plates from it. So I got to like get in there with hot water and a fucking chopstick <laughs> to make sure everything gets out. But it's worth it because waffles are delicious. Uh circa in the chat says wow bob you just solved what i've been trying to figure out for all these years <laughs> and gary says pancakes also taste better than waffles factually incorrect no it's it's just no. a, it's waffles are just a crispy pancake dude waffles are just flat pancakes <laughs> no waffles pancakes 3D. are just flat waffles waffles are 3d pancakes <laughs> <laughs> um uh, it, uh, pancakes are cheating because they get to have all of the fixings and stuff all the fancy yeah. stuff on top if you include all of that stuff then yeah like if you can if you want to give me if i have the option between a regular waffle and a cinnabon pancake i'm gonna have the <laughs> cinnabon pancake but if you're gonna if, if you're if we have a level playing field i'm gonna want the waffle that's why when i go to also, ihop i get a freaking i get a pancake instead of a waffle because the pancakes have all this shit you can put on it yeah also, you can get yourself a nice book like this. Will it you waffle? Can cook, you can cook more things in your waffle iron than just waffles. 
Your for name. for the record, the only the only recipe I've used out of this book is for waffles. Your name is like right in, in the title of it. <laughs> I just realized that. But you can you can make like BLTs, uh, waffle croque madame, uh, waffle burger with cheese, <laughs> waffled filet mignon, waffle chicken fingers, waffle tamale pie. <laughs> Uh, there you go. Highly recommended. Travel says most things can waffle. It turns out. Yes. Um, did Rhett and Link write that? Uh, Ian. <laughs> no. Ian says uh, Japan pancake greater than waffles. Okay. Here's the thing about a Japanese. Uh, so I'm thinking of like the fluffy ass pancakes, mm-hmm. and that is the complete opposite end of the spectrum than a waffle. You got waffles, yeah. which are a, a crispy pancake, and then you have the fluffy goodness of like a Japanese pancake. That is different than what we are debating here. We're debating a pancake. This basically just looks like a biscuit. Japanese pancake? Yeah. Never seen a Japanese pancake. Am I thinking of the wrong thing then? I typed in Japanese pancake and it's like this. It's like a pancake that's this big. Yeah. Yeah. I I think that they're really fluffy. They're not like a biscuit. They're not like, they're they're like spongy. Okay. So they're basically just thick pancakes. It's two pancakes with syrup in the middle and and portable. Okay. Type in mochi fuwa pancake. Oh, uh, okay. Mochi fuwa. Ooh, oh, ooh, ooh, God, fuck me up, dude. You know, when I was in Boston, I went to Chinatown, and my God, dude, the freaking pastries, my guy. I just want to I, when I I want I, when I am ready to go from this world I just want to <laughs> I want to eat the lethal dose of pastries. Uh we got D G D B D Y D D okay dude with 3 <laughs> months used to donate 420 every wolf den live on YouTube guess it's weekly gifted subs now well thank you. Thank uh, you, DG, uh, for the three months. Bob, just elope with me to Japan and let's move in with each other. Okay. <laughs> Can you fulfill my sexual needs, Ian? Balls in your court. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Is buying a PS Vita worth it in 2021, says Tiny Carrot? No. Buy a no. Switch. <laughs> Most yeah. of the good stuff that was on the Vita is on the Switch. Yeah. Except for the wacky JRPGs. But a lot of some of the wackier stuff is playable on PS4. Uh, Ian says, you're a gamer. You don't have sex. True. Got me there. I got to get this pancake off my screen. (laughs) Uh, I think that's enough. Uh, Okay. before Before you do the ending spiel... Everybody who's here on Twitch, I am going to stay for a little bit longer. I'm going to eat food in front of you. You're going to have to watch me do that. And I'm going to unbox this thing and figure out how it works. It's a keyboard controller. Uh, So stay here on twitch.tv slash wolfden for that. Otherwise, if you're done with the podcast, thanks for hanging out. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for watching us. Thank you for chatting with us. As always, the Wolf Den Podcast is every single Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern right here on twitch.tv slash wolfden. If you can't make the show for any reason at all we always put an archive version of it up over on the youtube channel youtube.com slash wolf them podcast so go and check it out on demand over there whenever you want if you prefer to listen to us rather than watch us you could do that as well we're also an audio podcast on anchor.fm slash wolf them podcast and your preferred podcast service of choice but no matter where you get this grand show from please be sure to subscribe rate and review us because that helps us with placement on all those respective platforms guys thanks for being here thanks for uh supporting us and all that jazz i'll see you on thursday i'm gonna be streaming pokemon snap so a little bit early hopefully and also there might be a sponsored stream uh If all goes well, they're supposed to approve an ad by Thursday. And if they do that, then there'll be a sponsored stream on Thursday. Uh, it'll be a fun time. So please come. Uh, again, 
stay here for me to unbox the keyboard. But if you listen to this afterwards, uh, goodbye. Bye. This screen is only here for the YouTube. So everybody, okay. nobody move. Nobody move.